The ninth episode of The Bad Batch Season 3 begins on Pabu yet again, where we witness Rucker and Crosshair helping a citizen as we transition over to another section of the island housing a cave of sorts. Batcher seems to be wary of this cave despite Omega stating that they've been in it a number of times already. As Omega discovers, the reason for Batcher's fear is the docked ship hidden in the dark and the person who owns the ship, this being Fennec's contact, Asajj Ventress. How Ventress found Pabu is a mystery, though she does state towards the end that Cloforce 99 isn't as safe as they believe they are on the remote island. After Ventress inquires about the reasoning as to why the Batch want information on M counts and some debate, Ventress is made aware of Omega being tracked by the Empire and potentially being force sensitive. As Ventress gives Omega her first test to determine her midichlorian count, which involves balance and focus, the other three members of the Batch use text database to confirm their suspicion. The bounty hunter in front of them is none other than Separatist. Sith assassin in War Criminal once trained under Count Dooku. Ventress overhears them talking about this and as a result gives Omega her second task of fetching a white blossom from a weeping Maya tree, in order to be alone with Hunter, Wrecker, and Crosshair. After a tussle between Ventress and Clone Force 99, Omega returns with the white blossom only to witness the scene of Crosshair knocked aside, Wrecker being force choked above the ground, and Hunter nearly at the end of Ventress's blade. After Omega tells Ventress to stop and Hunter says they aren't the same, Ventress responds by stating that that they were all pawns in the same war, and that the Empire is far more dangerous than they already know, ending it by telling them that she isn't their enemy. Based on countless missions, interactions, and experiences they've had in this new period with the Empire, I feel as though the Bat should already be well aware that people can change and that just because someone was a Separatist during the Clone Wars, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're enemies now under the regime of the Empire who doesn't care about either side. Nevertheless, Ventress departs, and the Batch return to the Marauder, where Omega urges the rest of them to trust Ventress so that they can finally discover the truth. Despite begrudgingly agreeing, the following morning, Omega would find Ventress at the docks, and they would begin the final test aboard a boat far from the island. Ventress states that many who wield the Force have an affinity for nature, though Omega fails to concentrate for long enough and states that the task is impossible. Following this trope, Ventress proceeds to prove Omega incorrect as she connects with the sea animals below who loop around the Boat. However, she would also unintentionally attract the attention of a colossal creature. As the two are under attack, Omega contacts Hunter, but as the Marauder arrives, Ventress states that they aren't helping and that she can stop the beast herself. Omega calls off the Marauder, and Ventress uses beast control in order to connect with the creature and eventually completely calm it. Omega and Ventress would of course be picked up by the Marauder, though it is interesting that after Crosshair helps Omega aboard, he also offers a hand to Ventress, really showcasing the fact that he's changed, and I think because of that, he understands that Ventress could have likely changed as well, realizing that they all have a common enemy in the Empire. After conducting what I assume is a blood test for Metachlorians, Ventress states that Omega isn't force sensitive and that she should feel lucky the Empire isn't making her a prime target, though Omega would state that she already is one. Rucker would take her aside to relax her mind and grab something to eat, and as Hunter and Cross her are alone with Ventress, the two state that she's lying about something. Ventress responds by stating that if Omega did indeed have potential, she would have to leave Clone Force 99 in her former life behind, something we saw with Grogu and Din Djarin in The Mandalorian. Of course, the Batch are already heavily against this idea, but I think perhaps if all of them do die in the finale in some way, I think Omega will escape and pursue a life as a Jedi, helping others as much as she can. This is if she does actually possess the ability to wield the Force. Finally, after the Batch question if she's worried the Empire will come after her or not, she states that they can try and that she has a few more lives. Now this could be metaphorical for the fact that she's simply hard to kill, or perhaps it could refer to Night Sister Magic. We can already assume that she was likely revived via the same way after she dies in Dark Disciple. Anyhow, hopefully you all enjoyed, have a great day, see ya.